MMA and I take it very serious. I, I don't cry any corners in the gym. I always look for hard rounds. I show up to all the classes. I put the work in properly. I'm not a one-dimensional fighter. And I show that again tonight. So thanks, bro. Yeah, come on. What was the feeling, obviously, fighting there tonight? The crowd's been absolutely sensational there, Kiefer. Stop, man. That was true. That was ridiculous. That was like a dream. Literally, with a cage two minutes, and I just feel like I'm on a cloud or something, but that was mad, yeah. Like, literally, we, I know it's cliche, and people say we have the best fans in the world, but I just don't think anyone can say anything different after that. That's that's different level, that was. I felt people cheering me on. I didn't hear it. Like, I felt my whole body vibrating, walking out. It was crazy, and I live for that. That's nuts, yeah. That's... That's why we're the best fans in the world. We have the best support. I fucking love this country, I swear to God. Keeper, just in terms of the way that fight went, did that go exactly how you envisioned it? No, never, no. I, I, I expected to hit him once and he's gonna hit the floor. That's the way I always think though. This is a fight and I'm always thinking knockout. I'm, I'm never thinking I'm gonna take it down, pass guard, take his back. But I can do that as well. I always think he's gonna march on, I'm gonna catch him a shot and he's gonna go down. He was like an awkward striker, so he was hard to catch clean. But fuck it, it's, it is what it is. I seen the leg, he wasn't checking. It was an instinct, I hit his leg and I seen he was wobbled a bit. I stayed on the knee and I knew he was gonna clinch. And I had it in my head, if he did clinch, I wasn't gonna defend, I was gonna attack. I'm not, I'm not just gonna try to not let him take me down. I'll happily go to the ground to show people how good I am at Jiu Jitsu, so. It was a beautiful combination that you caught him and then he immediately shot for the takedown. You, you thoroughly expected that to take him. Yeah, well again, I nearly got a little vision of the last one of the last ones I had. I wanted a little bit of a brawl, but they were getting hit back. And I had to take a step back and say, right, calm the fuck down here. Don't let these people get to you. I know they all want to see the blood and the craziness, but these model good looks, mate, they have to stay like this. Do you know what I mean? For me, feel yourself. Please see what happens. You, you spoke to me about how much this means for your family, about put, putting food on your table. I just watch your mother and your girlfriend watching yes. this fight. Your mother couldn't even watch the action, but she was clearly very, very yeah. proud of the reaction you posed. How good does this feel to uh, be put, putting food on your family's table in this you. manner? We're going from Tesco steaks to filet mignons now, so thanks very much for that. So I'm going to put good food on the table now, yeah? We're extra asparagus. Is there, any, uh, is there any good thing in that, like, as we spoke about, there was a lot of expe expectations for you to come in and get a finish. How good does it feel to kind of come up and, and give people what they want and so forth? Yes, well, whatever about people, I want to finish all the time. I, I'm never happy if I got a decision. My last vote decision, I took a lot from it and I studied it and I learned from it. But I don't want to keep doing decisions. I'm not a decision for you. I'm a killer, mate. And I mean that. I will take people's heads off, or I'll take their necks, or I'll take a limb. I'm looking to finish people every second I'm in there. Any any position I'm in, even against the fence, anything. I'm not a staller for you. And, and that's a guaranteed fact. Every time I'm in there, I'm looking to kill every time. So that's a fact. Yeah. I'm never going to be a grinder to decisions. That's not me. And if that happens, I'll retire. You get me? So I'm happy I got another finish first round, like I said it. But I wasn't expecting a nice. Gunny style, rear naked choke, body lock, you know, but I'll take it. Keeper, your confidence this week, and rightly so, coming in, but you spoke about potentially wanting a better opponent. With all greatest respect to Daniel, what's what's the situation in your mind now? Yeah, like I said in the cage, one, I, I want to go down a weight class. I'm too small for 170. Going to 155 is a very big ask. It's 15 pounds, mate, it's hard. 165, let's make a belt, and I will fight someone top of the range for a world title straight away. I don't give a fuck. That's what I want to do. I'm not a 170 competitor. I train with welterweights in my gym that are literally 15 kilos heavier than me. And it's not like that. I, I'm 82 kilos now. I'm not a welterweight. I, my teammates go back to 89 the next day. So I want to go down. Make, let's make this weight class happen. Go down a little bit. And if I can do the 165 cut and I feel fresh, I'll attempt 160. And if I do that and I'm fresh, then I'll try 145. But I, I feel a bit bogey signing the contract for 145 and having to cut. And just in case it doesn't happen, it's not fair to the opponents, it's not fair to my health, whatever. Make a 165 division and let's do it with someone top of the range. That's anyone, the way Anyone in mind for that top of the range? Or whoever wants it as well. I'm sure there's loads of welterweights that are thinking the same as me. They don't want to be 170, they don't want to go down. So make a belt, let's do it, proper. Has there been any talks about that with Scott or anything? Like, has there been any word around the promotion? Going to meet Scott, I want to meet Scott. I thought he was going to come here today, but he didn't. So but hopefully I'll meet him soon and we can sit down and talk big business on the next contract. More food on the table. Maybe I'll move up the fucking heavyweight with all this food again for my family, I don't know.